Thank you, Giuseppe, and uh, uh, thank you for the for the kind invitation. I, I, uh, it's a pity I cannot be there, but I hope to, to see you somewhere uh, <laughs> somehow. Uh, all right. So um, uh, today I would like to talk you uh, to tell you about uh, uh, some uh, entanglement uh, in many body system, uh, in particular these uh, measures, uh, um, which are known as uh, entanglement Rainy entropies. And uh, in particular, um, I would like to tell you about uh, a new method uh, to compute them, which is which is uh, something known as ballistic fluctuation theory, which I will in introduce for you. And uh, for this talk, I actually will consider, um, I will then specialize, I will try to keep the discussion as general as possible up to a certain point, but then I will uh, uh, specify to um, a particularly simple case, which is a free fermionic case, which is where we are now. And this is work um, in progress with um, Benjamin Doyon uh, and uh, Giuseppe, uh, which is uh, his PhD, one of his PhD students. They are both at King's. Uh, uh, so this is uh, the work, the collaboration which I initiated uh, this year at King's. All right, so uh, this is the outline of the talk, as I was mentioning. Uh, so basically, it's divided in three main parts. So at, at the beginning, I will introduce for you this ballistic fluctuation theory, which I think it might be the, the new uh, missing bit for, for, for most, uh, most of you. And in particular, I will uh, I will uh, try to explain how this this theory is related to the concept of twist fields. Uh, then, uh, in the second part, I will uh, just uh, remind you what is uh, so um, uh, what is the replica approach to entanglement in many body system, and how it is related to special uh, twist fields, which are called branch point twist field. And finally, I will um, use this uh, theory, this ballistic fluctuation theory, to compute entanglement entropy. And I will show that basically, uh, from uh, this, this, this give a new and very general framework, uh, um, which allows to get uh, both results at equilibrium in generic generalized Gibbs ensemble and uh, the dynamics as well after quantum quench from a unique uh, formula. Uh, so, I mean, I anticipate that the results are, are not new, but the method is new, and uh, and I think we think that uh, shares uh, quite a bit, uh, um, I, I mean, uh, it it gives a quite a, a bit more understanding of, of what is really the source of entanglement, but uh, let's see. Okay, so let me start with uh, this ballistic alteration theory. So ballistic fluctuation theory, uh, as I'm going to explain later, is basically um, a large deviation theory for uh, currents. Uh, so to start with, let me set, uh, let me give the general setting. So I will be interested in one dimensional system, in particular quantum system, though the, the, the theory also holds for classical system. And I will assume that um, uh, these systems are uh, homogeneous uh, both in space and time. Uh, actually, will allow also for uh, uh, local uh, uh, systems which are locally homogeneous, uh, homogeneous in space and time, and uh, characterized by local interaction. The main thing that I will assume is that uh, they admit uh, um, an Euler uh, hydrodynamic description, and in particular, I will assume the existence of uh, unconserved quantities which can be local or quasi-local. Uh, which uh, just means uh, that, um, I mean, they, they can be written as, as an integral over some density, and this density either as a support uh, in the vicinity of a point or at least as a, or at most as uh, some exponential tail. But for us in particular, the, 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 it's actually only, uh, only matters the fact that uh, these charges are extensive, as I will uh, um, say later. And uh, as I was mentioning, these this, uh, this, uh, um, charges can be written as the integral over a density, and this density together uh, with uh, its um, current satisfy a continuity equation, uh, continuity equation of this form. Um, in, in this setting, I will be interested in the, in the manifold of uh, maximal entropy states. So those are states which are characterized by a vector beta of uh, n Lagrange multiplier, such that the, mm, the, the density matrix is written in this form. So it's basically is a maximal entropy state subject to uh, as many constraints as the number of conserved, quant, uh, conserved charges. 
And in particular, this manifold of states include uh, Gibbs ensemble in generic system, where we have a few number of conserved quantities, generalized Gibbs ensemble in the case of uh, uh, integrable system, where instead we have an infinite number of conserved quantities. And in general, uh, even if, um, I mean, they are not exactly uh, maximal entropy state, but I'm going to say actually will extend also to state emerging up after quantum quenches in that uh, one can argue that basically, at least locally, uh, they are they are close enough to to, um, to mass, to maximal entropy states, and one has only to take into account basically some long, long range uh, correlation, which I will uh, clarify later how to take into account. Another important point is that uh, uh, all what I'm going to say basically is a, a big assumption, which is uh, uh, basically the assumption of a strong enough clustering, uh, namely uh, one assumes that, uh, uh, that the integral of con uh, connected correlation functions are finite, and this will be important uh, uh, for a reason which will be clear in a while. So before going to uh, our, um, to time dependence and that of equilibrium setting, it's actually useful to talk about large deviation theory for charges. Okay, then later on I will uh, I will go to to uh, currents and actually generalize currents. But let me recall this uh, standard large deviation theory for charges. So just uh, take one of the of the charges, uh, conserved charges of of your system, which uh, is associated uh, uh, will be associated to a density and a current. Then at equilibrium, uh, an important quantity uh, which one uh, would like to characterize is the amount uh, of, of, of this uh, charge within a certain interval, let's say from zero to X. And this quantity is actually, uh, its fluctuations are fully characterized by uh, the, uh, its moments, okay? So the cumulants, which are just, just this delta J to the power alpha for alpha in uh, uh, an integer. Uh, so, uh, according to the, the large deviation theory, so this, this quantity ba basically um, uh, scales, uh, uh, is proportional uh, scales like uh, X, so it's a linear scaling in X, and so one can define the, in, an intensive, the intensive associated quantity, and large deviation theory tells us that basically the probability to find uh, uh, this, uh, this quantity um, far from its mean value decay exponentially with a function which is called the rate function, which I call E here, and actually the function we will be interested in is uh, its Legend transform, which is the squeal cumulant generating function, and this is just uh, uh, formally defined in this way, uh, basically um, uh, uh, basically generates the, the cumulants, so which are this uh, C alpha here, okay, by Taylor expansion. So it's actually a simple, uh, a simple result that uh, uh, at equilibrium, this function is given by a difference of, uh, of uh, free energies, and importantly, or this result uh, uh, also if there are, uh, if basically there are no, str no strong uh, correlation uh, uh, along the path where I'm integrating, so here from zero to X, or if you want uh, just to set the notation for what I'm saying later on uh, along the horizontal path zero, zero, X, zero, okay? So- Paula, uh, why, why this charge should uh, fluctuate it? Aren't conserved? Well, yeah, I mean, but uh, even if they, they, they are, I mean, they, they are conserved in the sense that the expectation values, right, uh, uh, is fixed, but, but, but then uh, they, they're, they're, uh, um, their moments uh, can, uh, are not trivial, right? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, they are conserved or not. So if... Okay, if something is conserved, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, it doesn't have fluctuation, right? Uh, it's a contradiction in terms. Well, um, so let me think about that. Uh, um, um, Yeah, I see your point, but um, mm. sorry. 
So if the fluctuation is uh, in somehow in the initial, you run the system many, many times. Yeah, I mean, at equilibrium, uh, I mean, yeah, equilibrium, in fact, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's not. Uh, but uh, I think we agree that given a condition doesn't fluctuate it at all. Yeah, yeah, I see. So what only you if you mean, consider yes. many, many instances. Yes, yes, you're okay. right. Uh, yeah, so I will, in fact, I mean, I will be, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, um, yeah, if you if you look at that as a, somehow as a random variable uh, uh, in that sense, and so it, and, and, and so in, I mean, the, the, what, 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 what in this context, what it really means is that in fact uh, you have to consider many realization. Yes, yeah, you're right. But uh, but actually, I mean, this is probably more uh, makes more sense. Uh, um, at, at, uh, it's even clearer at, uh, out of equilibrium. Uh, but uh, maybe let me go a bit farther and then and then tell me if uh, if it uh, doesn't make sense uh, for you even the following, okay? All right. Um, okay. So now, so this is this is what uh, this is the the the, the setting uh, for uh, when we are at equilibrium. But now, uh, let me go farther. And consider uh, uh, the out of equilibrium setting. So now we are considering the same charge with the same uh, uh, density and uh, and current. And uh, um, and now if uh, if we are out of equilibrium, uh, one is usually interested in uh, in transport instead. So basically in uh, uh, characterizing uh, the uh, the uh, given uh, uh, so the. the uh, the, the amount the amount of charge passing through a given point let's say x equals zero in a given uh, window of time okay um uh, and now and and now again this uh, uh we can characterize uh, um this quantity by all its uh, all its cumulants even one actually one can go even farther and actually define a generalization of that which is a two current which is defined uh, which is defined this way uh is, is basically the, uh, as the perpendicular component of a, of the two current JQ along a generic path from zero zero to XT, and uh, uh, and this quantity basically so what one what one can define uh, the 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 Euler scale uh, the, uh, the um, Euclidean Euclidean distance uh, uh, between these two points and basically uh, now the, the the idea is that uh, um, if uh, there is ballistic transport, then um, this quantity delta J now will be proportional to this scale L. And so again, as before, one can define the intensive the associated intensive quantity, and uh, uh, its uh, uh, Legendre transform would be again the scale cumulative generating function, uh, which is uh, which is the object of interest for us. Now, the an important point is that uh, um, um, again, as before. A crucial point is that all all these uh, alls, I mean, uh, this object is well defined uh, if these uh, basically if these cumulants are well, well defined. And for this to be true, basically, what one assumes is that there are no strong co strong correlation among points along this path. Okay. Um, so now. Uh, the 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 whole point uh, the whole point of this ballistic fluctuation theory is to give a prediction for this uh, um, function f of lambda okay this uh, uh, scale cumulant generating function and uh, so how, how is that uh, done so basically the idea is that is that one uh, um, bias the initial state um, uh, rho of beta by the exponential of the of this delta j which i defined before and this basically defines a lambda dependent state okay such that when lambda is equal to zero is uh, the initial state and the one that can actually show that all these states uh, are all uh, of the, the mass type so they are all maximal entropy states um so in, and actually so uh, one can one can see either either this uh, um, uh, this this flow in the in the states or directly can write a flow equation for the coefficient beta, which uh, if for example we consider the path from uh, the segment path from zero zero to x t, which is characterized by an angle gamma, then this takes this form. Where actually the the main important the main point is that uh, it only enters uh, this matrix A 
which is uh, uh, the um, so-called flux Jacobian matrix, which is defined as the um, derivative of the expectation value of the current with res uh, of the current uh, uh, i um, with respect to the variation of the expectation values of q j. Okay. And so basically what, what we are saying is that this flow only, I mean, uh, is only fixed by the hydrodynamics, okay, because this object is the crucial object of hydrodynamics. And uh, this uh, AIJ basically, uh, as we can see from its definition, is actually dependent, uh, it depends on the basis uh, um, by definition, but uh, its, it's uh, um, universal properties are encoded into its uh, eigenvalues which uh, are interpreted as the effective uh, velocities of the hydrodynamic mode. And so now the, what ballistic fluctuation theory tells us is that once we have, uh, the, once we have this flow, now this f of lambda can be calculated as this uh, integral over um, uh, this quantity, which, which is now importantly, uh, uh, whose expectation value is taken along the flow, okay? So these expectation values means a trace of rho lambda beta, okay? So it's along the flow. So basically what, the, if we go back to the definition be of, before of this of, of f of lambda, what uh, this is telling us is that uh, uh, using hydrodynamics, we can kind of bring these expectation values from here to the exponent at the price of now going through um, along uh, along the flow. In, in, in that this this was computed in the initial in the initial state row beta, and now we have something computing al al along the flow. And to be, to, to be more concrete and specializing again to this path which I was taking before, this is the form that uh, this f of lambda takes in general. And again, what is important is that now this f of lambda is only given in terms of hydrodynamic quantities, namely expectation values of, of current and, uh, and densities. So what, is, uh, what this tells us is that basically if we know if we know something about uh, how to compute this uh, uh, this quantity, basically, if we know if we know the hydrodynamics uh, associated, then we know this f of lambda. Um, all right. Uh, uh, now let's come to the let's uh, come to the um, relation to twist field. So now let's uh, let's take one one of this uh, uh, one, one charge and assume that uh, it is uh, an extensive conserved charge associated to a symmetry. Now, if it, it is extensive, namely it's uh, written as an integral over uh, over a density, uh, then one can define a night field, uh, which uh, can be uh, uh, it's a it's a field it's it's a quasi, it's, uh, called semi-local field. So it's, it's basically something defined from from a point. Uh, uh, so it's the integral from x to infinity of the same density, and uh, one can actually show that this is uh, independent uh, on the on the path. Uh, uh, but only depends on the endpoint, so it actually can be written uh, as a, a, a generic integral from uh, x t to to the um, to infinity in somehow uh, of this uh, of this quantity here, and um, actually uh, one can one can also see that this uh, this definition of the of the height field is consistent with the uh, so it's related in this way to q and j, so that uh, the uh, continuity equation is automatically um, uh, ensured. So now, if we uh, if we have such an extensive quantity, and, uh, uh, which implies that we can uh, define this height field, then a twist field is, uh, uh, is is just defined as the exponential of such height field. Okay, for a lambda uh, a real parameter lambda. So now the observation is that since uh, uh, this uh, the, uh, the difference uh, um, uh, the difference of phi x t and uh, minus phi zero zero is nothing but the delta j, which I defined before, which is the, because it's this object here. So now, this, uh, by, this, uh, by this relation, uh, this, this tells us that the ballistic fluctuation theory directly gives us the, um, uh, the, leading, uh, the, the leading behavior of the two-point correlation function of twist field. And basically, this is nothing but the exponential of minus L for, uh, uh, times the, the, the function which, which I defined before, okay? For uh, now evaluated for this charge. Um, now th this, uh, th this symbol that I use here, just to say that this is the just asymptotic behavior uh, in, in general, in particular in the quantum case, which we're, where we are interested, uh, um, uh, uh, that we're interested in, there can be some power law correction, for example, due to the non-commutativity of the, of the fields at different points. But, uh, 
In any case, the leading exponential behavior is given by uh, this ballistic fluctuation theory. Um, now, uh, everything that I said uh, up to now is actually very, very general. So I didn't use uh, any, uh, not, not even the fact that uh, the theory, uh, the, the theory is integrable. All this, all this theory is valid, uh, is valid in general. But now uh, the point is that uh, um, in, in the case of integrable, in, in the integrable case, uh, we do have an expression uh, for uh, this. Uh, we saw that basically this function of lambda only depends on aerodynamic quantities. And in the integrable case, we do have an expression for these expectation values uh, of Q and J. We can derive actually an expression of that uh, along this flow, lambda dependent flow. And this is given by um, this uh, theory, which was put forward a few years ago, known as generalized hydrodynamics. But uh, uh, this is just to say that where uh, um, our formula are really predictive. In our case, we will actually be interested uh, in something even easier, which is the case of free fermions, um, and uh, it will be clear it will be clear uh, soon why we go to this example. And uh, so we just consider basically a, a fermionic field uh, psi of theta, where theta for us is just the momentum, okay, and psi uh, dagger of theta. Um, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, so free fermions are in particular probably the easiest uh, among uh, integrable models. So in particular, they admit a basis of uh, conserved quantities. And uh, uh, for us, we will consider uh, um, just uh, just the occupation uh, and the occupation number psi dagger like theta psi theta, even if uh, this is a non-local basis of conserved quantities. But uh, this is not important for us. I mean, uh, one can uh, easily construct uh, a, a local basis uh, by just a linear combination. And in particular, in, in our case, uh, this. Uh, uh, more abstract uh, um, uh, maximal entropy states, which I was uh, con considering before, are in particular generalized Gibbs ensemble, which takes this form. Um, uh, uh, so in terms uh, of this uh, function uh, W of theta, which is just the uh, generalized Boltzmann one weight. And uh, this uh, HI of theta are just the one, uh, uh, one particle eigenvalues of the of a basis of local charges. Okay, so if if they act on uh, the on the one particle state, they just uh, give uh, this uh, eigenvalue. And exa example of of that are, for example, uh, are the uh, the energy. So uh, the, the, if we can write the Hamiltonian in this way, and in this case, uh, this H zero of theta would be. The one particle, the associated one particle eigenvalue, which is uh, nothing but the dispersion relation. Okay, so in our case, note that actually I, I, I'm not specifying whether uh, we are considering fermions on a, on a lattice or uh, uh, in the continuum, because basically what I'm saying is actually independent on the particular dispersion relation. So we can, you can consider your favorite model, and. Uh, in particular, if one consider now the flow generated by a given uh, uh, charge Q. Uh, with uh, one particle eigenvalue h of theta, we have a very explicit expression for this uh, uh, for this uh, function f of lambda, okay, in terms of all known quantities. So this is uh, the expression given for the that segment path that was say, that I was showing before, but one can generalize to any given path in general. Uh, and uh, what I want to notice is that actually we don't. In general, we don't need to know much about this charge, but the only needed ingredient is just uh, uh, is just the, uh, it's one particle eigenvalue. So we just need to know how this charge acts on the single particle basis, okay? Because this is the only uh, the only ingredient about uh, this charge which enters in this uh, function f of lambda. Okay, so. Uh, I, I, I hope that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lose uh, most of you at least. Uh, so this is uh, for now. We just uh, we just saw. I mean, which, are, which is the idea behind this uh, ballistic fluctuation theory, and uh, when it is really useful, and now in particular it applies uh, uh, to um, uh, to, correlate, to point correlation functional twist field. Now. Um, I want to switch uh, uh, subject and uh, recall uh, some basics of entanglement uh, within uh, the replica approach and how it is connected uh, to this uh, to the concept of branch point twist field. Uh, and um, and for this, so uh, let me consider uh, 
a generic system and uh, a bipartition of it, uh, and uh, this bipartition will uh, will induce a bipartition uh, of the Hilbert space uh, and the, the one associated to the subsystem A and the one associated to the subsystem B. And if one consider a generic state uh, um, row, uh, uh, which is the uh, which is the total density matrix associated to to a pure state uh, psi. The key object uh, that, we, that one is interested in uh, is the reduced density matrix. Uh, for example, the one of the subsystema A, which is, uh, which is uh, obtained by tracing of, over the degrees of freedom of the subsystem B. Now, given this object, one uh, can, uh, uh, can define uh, uh, many different uh, measures of entanglement, but in particular, in this talk, we'll be interested in the probably the, mo the most popular one, which is the entanglement entropy, which is defined as the von Neumann entropy of this uh, reduced density matrix, and uh, the larger family of the Rainy entropies, uh, which for uh, a, a real alpha in general are defined as one uh, over one minus alpha trace of uh, the power of this uh, uh, reduced density matrix. Now, the idea behind this replica trick is that, uh, so in general, these quantities are, uh, are uh, difficult to compute, in particular in the context of uh, many body quantum systems. Um, but then the idea is that if for some reason uh, it is simpler to compute the trace uh, of this power of, uh, Roy, uh, of uh, the reduced density matrix for uh, alpha being an integer, then if I'm able to analytically compute, uh, to analytically continue this alpha to real values, then I get automatically the Rainy entropies and by taking the limit alpha to one, I also get the von Neumann entropy. This is the basic idea. Now, uh, in general, so now our, ob uh, so now uh, we, we just uh, shift the, the problem uh, to the problem of computing this uh, trace of Roy to the power alpha. And now this uh, uh, has been shown for, uh, at first in the context of quantum field theory and then also extended that uh, to other systems that basically these quantities can be interpreted as the uh, path integral, uh, I mean, can, can be seen as, uh, as, the, um, um, as the partition function uh, over uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a alpha copy theory uh, where the, the copies are, are branched in a particular way. So this is actually simpler um, to understand in the path integral formulation where basically one can think to the path integral representation of, of each of these uh, copy uh, um, row, row A alpha times, okay? So in this case, alpha equal three. And, uh, and basically uh, corresponding, sorry, Corresponding to uh, to A, there will be uh, there will be, so uh, one can interpret um, the subsystem A as corresponding to this uh, cut, and now the, the copy are are joined in a particular way along the cut, okay, corresponding to taking the trace of the product of of all the of all the copy. Now, actually, uh, so the partition function over this uh, uh, complicated geometry can actually uh, be uh, in turn reinterpreted in, uh, into a, a simpler object, which is, uh, which is the, um, uh, the two-point function of twist fields, in particular branch point twist fields. So um, why is that? Well, basically the idea is that rather than dealing with, uh, um, uh, with uh, a field living on such complicated geometry, one can think of many fields living in a simpler geometry, uh, where now um, these uh, twist fields are inserted at the boundaries of the subsystem A, and uh, and basically they act in such a way that uh, when uh, a field cross, uh, um, so they, they can interpret it as uh, as uh, inserting a, a cut basically from one end to the other, so that when when a field cross um, is uh, this cut. The copy, I, uh, the copy i is sent to the copy i plus one. And uh, so th this defines this, define this twist field. And twist fields are basically, as we, as we saw before, the uh, fields which are usually associated to, um, to a symmetry of the system. And in this case, uh, they are, in fact, uh, they are uh, fields associated to the Z alpha symmetry of this replicated theory. So, um, uh, and uh, and uh, and in this in this context, actually, one can uh, uh, the most general definition that one can give is in term of uh, of this exchange relation. Okay, so if we have uh, uh, um, this psi i is uh, is uh, a field in the copy i, 
so uh, one um, uh, the, the point uh, y and uh, this is the, the twist field and uh, this uh, exchange relation just tells us that if uh, y is larger than x uh, then the copy i is sent to the copy i plus one and other y the action is trivial so this is a very general definition of twist field and this is actually even more general than the one i was giving before in uh, even if the one before is more uh, uh, suited for uh, for uh, in the context of ballistic rotation theory because in this case uh, uh, basically um, okay twist field are always uh, associated to some symmetry so in this case z alpha uh, but here I'm not talking at all about the, the associated charge. In particular, I don't require the associated charge to be extensive, and so I don't require the existence of the height field in general. So this definition uh, in its own is, uh, is more general. The point is that if now we want uh, to apply um, ballistic fluctuation theory to correlation function of twist field, which is what we want to do in order to get uh, results for, uh, uh, for the entanglement entropies, uh, then uh, we need to connect uh, somehow to the definition which I gave before, okay? And now comes basically uh, the reason why it is uh, actually uh, easier to, uh, to, uh, to restrict, uh, uh, at least to start with uh, restricting two free fermions. This is because basically in, in a free fermion theory, the symmetry Z, uh, uh, Z alpha is actually enhanced to a larger symmetry group, which is SU alpha. This is just because the theory is basically quadratic, so one can consider some uh, uh, transformation uh, um, of the of the multiplets uh, psi one uh, psi, psi alpha. And uh, once uh, once we once we notice that uh, we, we have this larger symmetry, then uh, we have uh, uh, two two main consequences of that. So first of all, this ensure since the SU, SU alpha is a continuous group. Uh, it's a continuous symmetry, then this uh, ensures automatically that uh, the associated charge will be extensive. And so in particular, this means that uh, we can now think of this uh, twist field as the exponential of some height field, okay? So now I'm choosing, there is a subtle point, which is I'm choosing lambda to be imaginary rather than real, which makes the twist field bounded, but it's actually just a, a technical point. And uh, the other uh, even bit technical point is that basically in order to uh, um, apply in an easier fashion, let's say, basic fluctuation theory, uh, one can further use this SU alpha and larger symmetry uh, to uh, diagonalize the replicated theory. What I mean by that is that so basically this, uh, for, um, since I'm considering fermions, uh, uh, on on uh, on, his, on this uh, replicated theory, so I have that within uh, 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 the same copy. Of course, fermion will uh, anti commute, right? But um, mm, since the different copies do not talk to each other, uh, fermions among different co uh, copies actually commute rather than anti commuting. One can uh, one can see that as a consequence of that, one can see that the uh, associated the S matrix associated to uh, this uh, this uh, the theory is actually uh, is actually non diagonal but one can uh, uh, can perform an SU alpha transformation which uh, 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 which allows to kind of fermionize the replicated theory so that now also also um, uh, fermions among different uh, copies will uh, will anti commute and this is a transformation which goes from psi i to psi j okay so this is my new basis now once i have that uh, what I uh, what I further consider is uh, a Fourier transform in the replica index, which is now my index J, which uh, give, uh, which brings me to my new basic C P. Okay, so P is now my Fourier index, and uh, this is because this uh, this actually allows to uh, simplify by diagonalizing the action of the twist field themselves. In particular, now the twist fields uh, in this uh, in on this basis will act simply as a phase where they act non-trivially. And and uh, and this means that I can write my uh, the, my total twist field as the product of twist fields of u1 twist field, as each associated to one of the, of this uh, um, uh, Fourier index quantum number. And once uh, once I have this exchange relation and uh, I, um, this simple action in terms of a phases, what I can do finally is to read the, the one particle eigenvalue associated to the charge. Um, which correspond to this U1 twist field. And I remind you that uh, the, this, this 
uh, this one particle, uh, this one particle eigenvalue is all I, all I need basically in order to to apply ballistic fluctuation theory. Okay, so this slide is a bit technical, but the the, the bottom line is that basically uh, making use of this uh, enlarged symmetry, one can actually fully characterize the twist field in the case of free fermions, and in particular one can uh, um, read, uh, read out the one particle eigenvalues of, of the associated charge, uh, which will allow us uh, to use uh, um, ballistic fluctuation theory to compute the correlation function of such twist fields. All right, and now let me go in, in fact to the, uh, to the main part of, of the talk, which is uh, basically how, uh, the application of, this, of the ballistic fluctuation theory to uh, correlation function of branch point twist fields. And uh, let me start uh, with um, considering uh, uh, the case uh, of uh, the Rayleigh entropy of a finite interval in a generic generalized Gibbs ensemble. So in this case, uh, let's say that my um, my subsystem is the interval zero x. So in this case, uh, the two point correlation function I'm interested in is uh, is uh, the two point function of twist field put at zero zero x zero. And uh, for what I've said before, so basically this can be written as the product over uh, uh, these uh, components of uh, U1 twist field. And now it, it is uh, to this uh, uh, to each of these um, uh, two point uh, correlation function of U1 twist field, which I want to apply ballistic fluctuation theory. In this case, the, the path that I choose, okay, is the horizontal path. So it's the path from zero zero to X zero. And in this case, so basically, the, uh, what uh, ballistic fluctuation th uh, theory gives me is uh, the main exponential decay of this two-point correlation function. Now, th this function f is what I showed you before, and so we can straightforward compute it, and it takes this form, where, I, again, I, 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 I just I, I like here that the only ingredient that, that we needed is, uh, after all, the one, uh, one particle eigenvalue of the charge associated to the u one field. And now from this, from this, uh, I mean, it, it's simple, uh, it's simple by just uh, uh, to, to read out the, uh, the function, the total function associated to the total uh, twist field, which is just the sum uh, of this, uh, uh, of this function FP uh, considered here. Uh, now, from the two-point function of twist field, uh, one, uh, uh, so th these are, uh, as, as I showed, these are associated to the power, uh, to the trace of the power of the reduced density matrix, uh, the reduced density matrix and from there one can read out uh, uh, directly the, uh, the Rayleigh entropies, which takes uh, this form, so basically they are extensive in X. And uh, this function h uh, alpha of theta can be written in this form as a function of the expectation value of the uh, uh, of the occupation of the occupation basically. This uh, so this result was uh, was uh, was actually already known in this paper. But uh, in in this way, I mean, uh, it, it follows uh, uh, it follows uh, basically from. Uh, uh, large deviation, large deviation principle, if you want, together with some insight from hydrodynamics. But now let us see as a, 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 why the same method actually allows us to go further and actually uh, to um, uh, to find uh, um, uh, to, to to find the behavior of the of these uh, Rayleigh entropies um, out of equilibrium. So after a quantum quench. So I will start by considering the, um, the, the Rayleigh entropy of alpha, uh, alpha of an infinite system. So I will consider the subsystem to be zero infinity. And in this case, uh, for uh, uh, what I told you, basically the object of interest should be the one point function of, uh, um, of uh, uh, the one point function of this, this twist field placed at uh, zero t. But, but uh, as I will now uh, try to convince you, basically the time dependence is actually uh, is actually uh, computable by looking at this two point function, which is uh, of the form of, that we want for applying uh, for applying our theory. Before uh, b before that, actually, let me note that uh, as I was telling at the beginning, now that we are interested in uh, uh, in the quantum quench scenario, actually. Uh, these correlation functions are not are not computed uh, uh, in a maximal entropy state. Okay, uh, these are computed in the initial state, uh, which uh, uh, which I mean in general uh, is not uh, is not a mess. But uh, um, basically, 
I mean, all, all the technique uh, that I showed you uh, work through because one can uh, take uh, into account um, uh, this uh, extra long range correlation, which uh, which uh, are in, um, which uh, uh, come out uh, in, um, in in this uh, in this state after the quench in a simple way. And uh, and so here, uh, actually, in order to understand, uh, so. Uh, um, how, how, how to how to go to this two point correlation function? I actually recall you uh, a crucial point of my of my of my talk that was that uh, in order to um, uh, to choose uh, which is the path where we compute uh, our uh, um, our function f of lambda, uh, we uh, a requirement was that uh, um, points along the path should not uh, have. Uh, 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 strong correlation. Otherwise, basically, uh, one can see that the function, the um, uh, the, the cumulant uh, uh, scale cumulant generating function is not well defined. Okay, uh, and the, the large deviation theory itself uh, uh, breaks down. And so now to see to understand which is the right path to choose to compute uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this correlation function, one uh, should give some further uh, information about the initial state. In our case, we uh, to for concreteness, let me choose a state of this form, which is basically um, a squeeze state, okay, which uh, comes out uh, quite natural in the in the context of quantum quench. For example, uh, one can think of that as coming out uh, as as uh, I mean uh, via Bogolubo transformation. This is a, a quite a quite general uh, scenario. For these states, uh, uh, so basically, one can see that um, that uh, these states can be seen as a as a source of uh, of, um, of pairs of particles with opposite momenta theta uh, of v d theta uh, minus v d theta. Okay, and and therefore, if if we now so let's say that we want to compute uh, initially, we we are, we are asked to compute this uh, one point function t alpha zero t. Um, uh, in this, this, I mean, in this uh, branch point interpretation uh, is, uh, is a one point function. So the Swiss field is inserted here, and this, uh, and therefore we, we we would like to compute the um, uh, our function f of lambda along this path. But we see that a short time, basically, uh, there will be these pairs of particles which actually do correlate points along this path. Therefore, this is this just tells us that we cannot use uh, our formula along this path. However, using the fact that twist fields are uh, basically only depend on the on the uh, on, on the initial point, uh, so they are local basically, and they are path independent, we can uh, uh, we can actually modify the we can actually modify the path in a way, um, uh, and, and we do that in this way. So basically, we just uh, we just modify uh, as a straight line uh, uh, which goes down first, and then the horizontal part. And now we see that basically points along this path are not correlated anymore, and so we can use now uh, to this for this path our, our our theory. Further than that, actually, one can notice that uh, um, this uh, this part, this horizontal part uh, at um, mm, which lies at t equal zero, actually will not contribute to the um, to the uh, to the time dependence, uh, and more specifically, one can even show that this contribution is zero. So one is left to the computation of this two-point correlation function of twist field placed at zero t and and uh, zero zero, and again now we want to apply this ballistic, ballistic fluctuation theory, but for this vertical path. Again, this is uh, the what uh, what we get okay from uh, from our prediction, and this gives back uh, the the formula for the linear growth uh, of uh, the of the Rainy entropy with the same function which I showed before, and here the the uh, the velocity of the of the particles. This again was uh, um, was basically this result was present already in this paper. Um, uh, but uh, but but basically, I mean, uh, in, the, in the case, at least in the case of uh, uh, in the case of uh, um, of interacting theories, this was uh, um, just uh, just conjecture. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, the, the, what what we want to do next is to extend this result for uh, a, a finite interval. So instead of considering a semi inter uh, so uh, a alpha system, we consider a, a, new, a finite system 
which goes from uh, zero to x, and this is now um, this is now uh, associated to the two point correlation function of twist field, put in zero zero t x t. Uh, and now let let me start with the asymptotic regime, which are the regime of small and large time. More more specifically, in the earlier uh, regime, what we're interested in the is in the ratio x over t, which goes either to infinity or zero. Then I will go farther than that. But let me start with these asymptotic re regimes. Then we want to make an argument similar to before. So now the initial path, will, the initial natural path, would be to compute the, uh, the uh, our uh, um, uh, our function f of lambda uh, along this path. However, again, if we start from from states uh, similar to those uh, which I was showing you before, now uh, points along this path uh, for short time will be in general correlated. So, th and so for short time we modify the path in this way. Again, the or the horizontal bit will not contribute. Uh, to uh, to the the growth of entanglement, and therefore we are left with with these two bit, which give which gives us the modulus square, okay, of this uh, of the two point function uh, along this vertical line. Vice versa, for larger times now, are th this this two vertical path will be correlated by uh, by the initial states, uh, and therefore we compute uh, our uh, um, we compute. Uh, our function along this path, and this just gives uh, the initial uh, the initial uh, two point correlation function. And now this trans in, now in terms of the Rainy entropy, is this translates into this result. So an initial growth which is uh, uh, linear in time, followed by saturation which is uh, um, extensive, okay, proportional to x. Now if we want to uh, extend, uh, so this is a uh, a bit disappointing in the sense that this is just uh, the two limiting result, but now in the Euler regime, we would like to extend this result to every x over t, if you want, fixed. And to do that, we need a, a last bit, which is uh, uh, basically, um, uh, we, we, we need a further characterization of our twist field. So up to now, we just decomposed our twist field into a U1 twist field, uh, where the index P was associated to the Fourier index of in the replica space. But now actually we note that uh, we can actually refine our knowledge of the twist field by defining uh, a twist field even for each uh, given theta, where theta is the, is the momentum, okay? And, um, and uh, in fact, basically, these are, uh, I mean, uh, knowing that uh, uh, since we, we, we knew the, the, the charge, the associated charge, uh, um, the charge associated to uh, the, the U1 twist field before, so now are, these are just a new twist field which are associated to a new charge which acts non trivially only of a, on a given theta, okay? So before, just add uh, uh, that the charge, uh, the one particle uh, eigenvalues was this guy times uh, a delta in P, so it was acting non-trivially only on a given P, but now this acts non-trivially only on, on a given theta. Further than that, we also use the, uh, the pair structure on the initial state. So the, we use it also the, also the initial state actually um, decompose uh, um, in, uh, in theta dependent bits. And therefore, uh, the, uh, as a result, the two-point correlation function itself can be written as a product over both theta and p over this two-point correlation function. And now applying uh, uh, the same argument uh, uh, to this two-point correlation function, we actually get the res this result for, for each x over, over t. So basically, now in terms of this new, uh, more refined twist field, we can actually uh, see exactly when we need to pass from this uh, choice of the path to this other choice of the path. That's the idea. And uh, okay, so this uh, this was more or less uh, all what I want to tell you. And um, I hope that uh, I I convince you that uh, this method basically gives uh, a more unified perspective uh, on uh, results which were available for rainy entropies both at equilibrium and then and after a quantum quench, at least in the case of free fermions. And in particular, from this perspective, uh, they have uh, a common origin uh, from a large deviation principle on one end and hydrodynamics uh, on another. We further introduced uh, in the last slide this uh, single mode twist field, uh, which, uh, as I mentioned, provide a refined characterization of the entanglement. So maybe 
it's uh, their properties are worth uh, looking into. And uh, I mean, uh, the, all this, uh, all this was actually, um, all this work is actually aimed uh, at the end uh, to a generalization to interactive models, in particular uh, integrable models. And in particular, we would like to uh, confirm a recent conjecture where uh, uh, of this paper, where it was shown that uh, uh, no quasi-particle picture holds uh, for uh, uh, rainy entropies uh, with a uh, rainy index uh, different from one in the case uh, uh, in the case of integrable models, uh, integrated in interacting models. And uh, with that, I thank you for the attention. Okay, thank you. Are there uh, questions? Edina. Yeah, thank you for the talk. I had a question about the uh, height field that you introduced for uh, yes. associated to conserved charges. So if you have several conserved charges, uh, mm -hmm. uh, would there be a height field for uh, each of that or can you express the, the higher yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the claim here is that uh, as soon as you have, uh, the only thing that you need uh, is uh, for your charge to be extensive uh, so that you can write that as an integral over a density. Because once you do that, basically this is your definition of height field. Any, any, uh, anything written in this way is an height field, basically. Yeah, but if, uh, so uh, if for an integrable model, you can have uh, uh, several extensive conserved charges. Mm -hmm. So uh, w w you can imagine introducing a height field for each of the charges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if, uh, for each of these charges, uh, for each charge of, uh, for, each, for each extensive, the only, the, uh, I was just, just stressing that uh, the only important point is that uh, this charge has to be extensive. Uh, so but the, the, once yeah. you have that, uh, yes, you can introduce the associated height field, yes. So the different uh, um, height fields will be independent? Mm, I would say so, yes. I would say so. If the charge, if the charge do, uh, I mean, if you choose your charge in convolution, yes. Okay, thank you. Hi. Thanks for the nice talk. In, in uh, one plus one dimensional conformal field theories, twist fields have a long history and they're like their anomalous dimensions were computed. And I wondered if those, uh, so they're like quadratic in the, uh, in the twist angle, I guess, P over alpha. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if that shows up at all when you do a short distance or short time limit. Can you, can you see any of these anomalous dimensions appearing? Uh, yes, so I mean, uh, in principle, uh, yeah. Um, okay, I, I don't know exactly from from this uh, perspective. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want uh, the the the, um, the dimension of twist field, uh, in the case of free fermions, are are related to these uh, phases here. Basically, you you can write uh, as a sum over p of some uh, of these guys here. Okay. So here, I mean, the idea is, is that uh, you should find, uh, of course, uh, um, the, the, the dimension, their dimension, because uh, because free fermions are are conformal field theory. But the idea of, as I was saying at the end, uh, was, I mean, I mean, there, if, if you want the conformal field theory, you you would all this would seem. Uh, uh, useless somehow all this approach because there uh, you know that twist field uh, are primary fields and uh, that's all you know in order to know their two point function. The the I mean the hope of this approach is to go further to go to integrable models which are not conformal field theories. Okay, where you cannot uh, use the fact that uh, they are primary field with a definite dimension. Um, yeah, so the, the, there would be more interesting. But yes, in this case for sure because uh, because it's free fermions. Uh, and uh, and um, if you want, the, the conformal dimension can be written uh, as a function of, of these guys, of this uh, of this one particle eigenvalues. Elijah. 
Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment actually because I think the question that you were asking was a bit more uh, more simple in a way than what she's doing here. I just wanted to tell you that indeed the dimension that you found in your work on orbifolds is exactly the dimension of these twist fields. So it's the field associated with cyclic permutation symmetry. And uh, there's a lot of works where this dimension is recovered by many different methods. So C over 24 N minus one over N. So it's exactly what, what you found in your work many years ago. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes. You do, you do. So uh, for example, in, in Paula's work, and especially in, in my work where we look at massive theories, we have tested that many times. So when you look at short distances, you recover the correct scaling. Yeah, I mean, here it's okay with discussing dynamics and more complex things, but, uh, but yeah, this dimension pops up all the time and it's, it's well established, it is what it should be. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. That's why I mean, I mean I'm saying in, in this specific example of three firms that there's no doubt that it, that is there. I mean, uh, uh, I should think now about to show you, to you directly from the results, but but it, it is there. I mean, uh, and it and it's just because these three fermions. I think here you get it just by summing over p. So if you take this p yeah, one exactly. and you it sum is, uh, from p yeah. one to n or something like that, you get again the the right uh, result. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Uh, when you say free fermion, what is the mass? Uh, as I was, as I said, at a certain point, so basically, here I'm not specifying the, the model, uh, right? Uh, ah, yeah, okay, okay, good, good, good point, actually, uh, also related to the previous question, because I'm not specifying the model. So, in fact, this is not, uh, uh, I mean, this is not the case that it will be always a conformal field theory, because... Uh, um, this depends on the dispersion relation that you choose, basically. So, um, what I said uh, actually applies to, to both uh, massive and massless uh, fermions. Uh, so, to, 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 to go back to the case of conformal field theory, you are in the case where you choose this dispersion relation to be uh, massless, but you can also choose the, a massive one. So, what I said was uh, actually quite independent on that. Uh, when you say large deviation, I think. Uh... It's large compared to some mass scale. Is it true? Mm, no, I mean, uh, no. What, what, I, what I say is, is just the, what I mean is just that uh, I um, I look uh, at, uh, at at for example here right uh, at equilibrium and just say uh, I, I I look to large uh, large x for example so in, in the limit uh, of x going so if you want this is the the, the right the right limit where things are defined you see. So, so this, this, for example, at uh, at equilibrium. So, is the limit x going to infinity? Um, one, so, so, you expect this uh, to go as a uh, linear in x. So, you have this one over x in front. So, you, you don't need a, any scale. Uh, well, in general, it's true. But you're thinking about free theory. So, free theory, maybe you don't need anything like this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure we don't. No, no, but but, but I think in general, um, I mean, this definition is valid in general, not 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 just in free theories. Okay, is there other? Uh, Paula, what happens if the conserved quantity are not local? If conserved quantities are not local, um. Good question. Um, I, I mean, uh, on the top of my head, I would say I don't know. That would be the honest question, the honest answer. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, I, I don't know. I would say I, I don't know. In, in this, what I said should uh, should uh, should apply. Um, for uh, I mean, actually, in all in all my discussion, uh, the locality of concert quant of this uh, concert quantities doesn't really enter much, right? Uh, so, um, well, actually, no, no, it doesn't enter. I think because uh, 
for, for example, this uh, this uh, single mode twist field, which I which I uh, was showing at the end, are completely are completely non-local. So you see, they are defined as, as a delta in momentum space. So um, this probably because are fermions. Yeah, no, but 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 just because in order at least in order to apply this to this two point uh, function uh, uh, of twist fields, uh, um, I, I mean, I'm not saying that the the, the the locality is not useful for, for integrable model in general. I'm saying that for what we are doing uh, for studying this uh, two point function of of, um, uh, of twist field, the locality actually doesn't play a big role. So basically, uh, because all all we use is basically the, is that this twist field can be written uh, as a, as the exp uh, as a exponential of some height field, and this height field uh, is uh, ultimately associated with with a charge, with an extensive charge. And this charge can be even non-local in principle. Okay, so I think we have to close. Let's thank Paul again and. Uh... So we'll convey here in half an hour.